I agree 100% that no prophecy is being fulfilled today, not even the forming of national Israel in 1948. But I would ask your opinion on this. Do you think it's reasonable for Christians to look at the events in Israel as proof of, let's call it, a positive direction toward the eventual fulfillment of end times prophecy? And so what I think the person is asking is, 1948 was not the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy, but can we see things today that indicate that the resumption of the prophetic clock is soon? Get with me 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. And, and while you're turning there, let me make this point. What has become very common is people frequently look at the current events of the day. And they say, well, this current event looks like the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. The most obvious example of that is people look at 1948 when Israel is regathered into the land and they say, well, that's Ezekiel 36. Israel's regathered into the land. Here is the fundamental problem with that. When you think of Acts chapter 2, when Peter stands up and he says, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He's literally saying to his audience, the things you are seeing is the fulfillment of the prophet Joel. And Joel 2 talks about the last days. It talks about the moon being turned to blood, the sun being turned to darkness, and it talks about the second coming. So when Peter says that in Acts 2, what he's saying, and I'm just going to flip to the chart here for a minute, there was no understanding of the dispensation of grace in Acts 2. So what Peter was saying is, guys, the 70th week is soon to come. It's not 200 years away. It's not 100 years away. It's going to be in your lifetimes. It's right around the corner. Now, to state the obvious, the 70th week has not happened yet. The sun has not turned to darkness. The moon hasn't turned to blood. The stars haven't fallen from heaven. None of those things have happened any time in the last 2,000 years. The reason they have not... So just get this with me. It's not because the chart looks like this. It's because the chart looks like this. In other words, the dispensation of grace was an intentional interruption of the prophetic calendar. Put it a different way. If you're at the end of a basketball game, or a football game, and you need the clock to stop, you call time out to interfere with, to halt the passage of time, right? It puts the game clock on hold. The dispensation of grace was a timeout. It was an interruption of the prophetic program. Here's why I, I emphasize this. If the dispensation of grace is an interruption of the prophetic program, if it's a time out in the prophetic program, then how much Old Testament prophecy can be fulfilled during the time out? None. None. Okay? Do you see that? Hopefully you do. Now look with me at 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. So Paul is describing the last days of the dispensation of grace, what it's going to be look what it's going to look like. Now notice it's perilous. So does the dispensation of grace end with revival and spirituality? No, it doesn't. It ends with perilous times. Verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters, proud, 
blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce bakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So what are the last days of the dispensation of grace going to look like? They're going to be perilous, right? Now, while Old Testament prophecy is not fulfilled today, let me ask you this question. Or I'll just, I'll just state it. The spiritual condition of the earth, the day before the rapture and the day after the rapture is awfully close. Yes? The only difference is that the body of Christ has been removed. So does it get worse after the body of Christ is removed? Yes, it does. But it's awfully similar. Let me ask you this. When, when the rapture happens, are there going to be 4 billion people leave the earth? Are there going to be 3 billion? 2 billion? You, you realize that when the rapture happens, the percentage of people that leave the earth is a fraction of it. What that tells you is the earth before the rapture looks awfully close to the earth after the rapture. So as we get to the end of the dispensation of grace, the spiritual condition of man at the end of the dispensation of grace is very similar to the spiritual condition of man immediately after the rapture, which is only, how long does the rapture take? The twinkling of an eye, right? So let me give you one other food for thought, one other item to consider. I've suggested to you the dispensation of grace is the interruption of the prophetic calendar. So now let me give you a different analogy. Let's say that there are two people playing chess and they're grandmasters and they're having this big important match and it's big auditorium and so on. And they take a break for the day. So they stop. They'll resume tomorrow. So the janitors come in and they're cleaning things up and they're getting everything rearranged and they're vacuuming. And two of the janitors say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and play chess. And so they sit down at the table and they move the pieces all around. Now, let me ask you this question. When the match resumes the next day, are they going to start with the pieces where the janitors left them? Or are they going to put them back in place where they were when, the, 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 when they broke for the day, when the timeout was called? So what I'm going to suggest to you is this. What you may see during the end of the dispensation of grace is not the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. It's the pieces being put back where they were when the prophetic program ended so that it's then positioned to move forward. The regathering of Israel into the land in 1948 wasn't the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy at all. What it was doing is it was putting Israel back in the same condition they were immediately prior to the dispensation of grace beginning. So will you see things like that? Yes, you may see things like that. You may see the pieces being returned to their proper place so that the prophetic clock can resume. Is that the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy? No, it's just putting the pieces back where they were. That's all that is. As we get to the end of the dispensation of grace, are you going to see things like that? You might. Will you see perilous times? Yes, you will, because Scripture says that you will. Now, that doesn't mean you need to be fearful because, listen, if someone kills you and you are a member of the body of Christ, guess what? You don't have to pay any more of your bills, right? And you were probably dreading some assignment you had to do. And, you know, think of all the things around the house you no longer have to fix, right? So you don't need to be worried about those things. You don't have to, have to fear them because you're going to a better place. 